Shido, Miku, and Leonard would watch in the sky as Toka, who had now gone into her inverse state, battled against Ellen. Of course, for Westcott, this was the opportunity of a lifetime, something he had worked towards his whole life and now getting a chance to see it up close and personal. He watched as his prized fighter and protege did battle against the spirit. The two being pretty evenly matched, to say the least. Of course, Shido wasn't sure when to step in. It wasn't like he wanted anyone to die in this exchange, no matter how much he despised D.E.M., Ellen, Westcott, all the same. He didn't want Toka to kill anyone. He knew that if she did, it'd be game over. Killing wasn't something you could come back from so easily, and yet even still, he would do everything in his power to save her. Ellen, for her own part, was holding her own rather well against the inverse Toka. She had actually been able to counter some of the spirit's best attacks, but it was becoming painfully obvious that despite all of that, she was in no condition to fight. And she was in no condition to win either. So much so that when she found an opening, she moved to retreat along with Mr. Westcott. I'm sorry I failed you, Master. But at the state I'm in right now, even if I could win, it would still come at a great loss. And your protection is our top priority. It's fine, Ellen, truly. You did well, even better than I expected, and I've gotten everything I've needed from this day, all the data and the research, so I think it's time that we take our leave, as you wish, if that's truly what you desire. Indeed it is. Westcott! Shido would yell out towards him. Ah, Takamiya, or should I say... Shido Itsuka, the self-proclaimed fastest man alive, The Flash. It was an honor to meet you. If you survive this encounter, then I really hope that we can meet again. And what makes you think I'm letting you get away so easily, bastard? Snart held his freeze gun directly towards Westcott. Consider your vacation suspended. You're free to go as well. We gotten all we needed out of you. Honestly, it was just about disposing you, but your end will come at some point or another. You think I'm just gonna let you go that easily? You act like you have a choice. See, Snart, there are two types of people in this world. The conquerors and those who get conquered. You, my friend, were conquered. We stripped you of everything that you could provide, of all your value. And now, you have nothing left. You're of no use to me, and as such, you're of no consequence. Your power is so unstable, you have to rely on a gun just to be able to access it. Otherwise, you're harmless and pathetic. But, all the same, you are entertaining, all of you. So, I truly look forward to seeing you again. Surely, you'll provide me even more entertainment. With that, Westcott would disappear along with Ellen, leaving Shio, Miku, and Leonard together to deal with Toka, which was easier said than done, as in her current state, 
She had no recollection of memory of what she had experienced ever since she had met Shido in the first place. And that made her very hostile. Leo would play on defense while Shido would try to get close to Toka, although it was a lot easier said than done, considering the fact that in her state that she was in right now, there wasn't any way of speaking reason with her at all. And then there was Miku, who did her best to use her power of restraining to try to keep her in check, although Toka even managed to break free of that also. At one point, Miku found herself looking down the receiving end of one of Toka's devastating strikes, one that surely would have killed her. In that moment, as if her life flashed before her eyes, Miku began to think. She began to think about her life itself, everything that had led her to this moment. She began to wonder if maybe... If just maybe things could have been different for her. If she could have gone down a different path. A better path. But all the same. In the end. Maybe this was fitting. Maybe what Shio had said about being there for her. It was all an act. But if this is how it should end for her. Then so be it. Although the end did not come, for Miku she found herself swooped off her feet and in the arms of the Scarlet Speedster, as Shio moved her to safety. <laughs> Cutting it pretty close there, don't you think? Sh- Shido, you... you saved me. Well, yeah. I wasn't just going to let you get hurt now. After all, I always keep my promise. You, you kept your promise. Shido. For Miku, her whole world had unraveled at that moment. Although, you could say that her world had been unraveling for a while now. Shido Itsuka was breaking every mold that she had conceived. Every layer of defense that she kept welled around her heart. He was slowly chipping away at it one by one until now, the reservoir that was her emotions had finally burst forward. Perhaps she couldn't trust everyone. Perhaps there were people in this world who would ultimately let her down. People who would lie to her, manipulate her, betray her. But Shido was not such a person. For Miku, she always wondered. She had begun to wonder. If her life were in the same position as Toka's was right now, would Shido fight so desperately for her? So desperately as he has for all the other people in his life? Now what seemed like an impossible question was nothing more but a silly one. Because she had the answers. He would come for her. He would save her time and time again. He wouldn't let her down. As such, not only had Shio gained her confidence, but he had gained much more in the process. Although Snart, in the meantime, was not for the lovey-dovey reunion of sorts. Hey Shio, if you're done collecting girls like Pokemon, could you focus on the main task at hand? Because your first one here is still going off the deep end, and she's looking to murder all of us. Oh, sorry. Miku, just stay here, all right? But Shido, it's... Don't worry. I'll be all right. Be back in a flash. Shio would move as quickly as possible, moving Toka out of the building and moving her to an area that was secure, with no threat of hurting casualties. You were able to grab hold of me so quickly, and you were able to move with the swiftness. You are definitely troublesome, speedster. But still, I've met beings far faster and way more powerful than you. I do not know why I sense the power of the spirit inside of you, but it makes no difference now. All that matters is that I will conquer you here, and this will be the end. Yeah, yeah. 
Toka, you need to snap out of this and get a hold of yourself. Toka, you keep referring to me in that name, but I do not know of which you speak. I am the princess. You're Toka. That's who you are. It's who you've always been and who you'll always be. Just in time, Shido's other friends will all arrive, ready to help him at a moment's notice. Although, much to everyone's shock, Shido threw his sword to the side. As he walked forward to the armed Toka, Kotori and everyone else warning him of the danger. A warrior who discards his weapon? How foolish can you be? I don't need a weapon to do this. Before Toka could make her next move, she felt his lips press against hers. A kiss, a stolen kiss of all things, but yet one that brought recollection and clarity. A kiss that told many truths, more so than even a thousand words could comprehend. For Shio, he conveyed all of his emotions, his feelings, his truest inner desires, the things that the heart cannot lie. In that moment, Toka would revert back to her original state, gaining control over her sanity. In the process, freeing her from the darkness, the darkness that kept her bound and into the light that was Shido Itsuka. For everyone else, they all breathed a sigh of relief. The day had been saved. Everyone was safe and everyone was going to go back home. Of course, in the aftermath of it all, there were many things that had to be sorted out, many things that had to be explained. Although thankfully, because there were no casualties, government officials and the like were able to sweep it under the rug. Shio would get the chance to meet a lot of new faces, including the one that helped out his sister in time of need. The name Cisco, well, Francisco, but people just call me Cisco. Cisco Ramon, nice to meet you. Shio Itsuka, thank you for helping Mana. I really appreciate it. How do you two know each other? This guy here used to be my co pilot back in the day when I used to work with DEM and the AST. Although, I thought this idiot died on our mission two years ago. Then you just come spiraling out of nowhere to save the day. Seriously, how could you do such a thing? Well, I wasn't in the best of shape at the time, so it's not like I would have been any good to you anyway. That's not the point. I was worried about you. Don't ever do something like that again, understand me? I promise I won't. But still, you have Dr. Wells to thank. He's the one who's been looking after me all this time. Thanks for looking out, Doc. It's no problem, Cisco. It's the least I could do. Of course, that brought up some questions, like how on earth the doctor would know and want to help Cisco of all people. But still, a lot of things got swept under the rug, as always. But still, there were other things to take care of, like Miku. Some time had passed and, well, she had a change of heart. Well, for Shido, he suddenly went from being a maggot to darling. Her precious darling. One of whom's affections she absolutely loved and cherished. And, well, safe to say, she made no qualms about her desires or her wants. A girl that knows what she wants and is not afraid to take it. Yep, you gotta love a girl like that. As for Snart, he and Yoshino would get a chance to reunite. The young girl happy to meet the one of whom she looked up to like a brother for so long and to know that he was well. It's good to see that you're back and doing well, Snart. I knew those DEM agents weren't gonna keep you down. <laughs> Yoshino. How's Yoshinan been doing anyway? Oh, she's doing well. Thanks for asking. Yep, I'm a-okay. But how about you? I've been so worried. I didn't... 
I didn't know if I would ever. Come on now. You know it would take a lot more than those bastards to keep me down. It's going to be all right. You're not going to leave again, are you? I'll be around. You've made some really good friends, haven't you? I have. There's Shido and Toka, Yuzuru and Kaguya, Kotori and Miss Reina, Dr. Wells. I like being with everyone. I'm glad. I'm glad you found somewhere that makes you happy. But I want you here with me. I don't want to lose you. Don't worry, kid. You're not going to lose me ever again. I promise. After spending some time with them, Snart would pack a bag and get ready to go. Freeze gun tucked away. Shido would see him off. You know, we got plenty of room for you. You don't have to be a drifter. Yeah, but hanging around, playing house, that's not really my style, Itsuka. You're going after DEM, aren't you? What do you think? Look, I want to take those bastards down just as much as anyone else. But if you try going in there like a one-man army, you're not going to get very far. I'm not saying that to downplay your skills, but don't act like I don't know the truth. I know fully well that if I just go charging in like a madman, I'm not going to get anywhere. I just want answers. I want to figure this out for myself. I want to know what those bastards did to me and Yoshino. And then I want to destroy them. Everything. All of it goes. I agree. But we could do it together. Don't you want that? I mean, at the very least, Yoshino would... I don't want her to get any more involved than she needs to. She's happy right now. Happy with all of you. I want it to stay that way. That's why I entrusted her in your care. You'd be wise to remember that. Because if anything happens to her under your watch, I'm going to make DEM pay. And then I'm going to make you pay. And I know how to work with a hammer and ice. Yeah, duly noted. Still, at least if you ever need anything, don't be a stranger. Just give us a call, all right? Here, it's a communication device. It's small, so you can keep it hidden, and it's set to a frequency where only we can receive it. If you don't want to call unless you absolutely have to, that's fine. And we won't call you, you can call us. And you can also stay in contact with Yoshino. I appreciate it. Take care of yourself, Flash. And good luck. You're gonna need it. Right. In the meantime, the culture festival was still going to continue. And Miku had a special performance. One for her own precious darling. As the song would begin, a song dedicated to her true love, Shido found himself with a lot of undue attention because now it seemed as though the faces in the house were ever growing, ever expanding. Life was always going to be unpredictable. You never know what could happen. In one second, everything can change. You go from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows. But often in the arms of defeat, you find yourself being snatched up by victory and the freedom that comes with it. For Shido, he wasn't sure what life held for him. There were still so many things he didn't know about himself, about that strange place, the speed force. Perhaps he'd ask the doctor about it. But whatever the case, whatever this world had to offer, and whatever it had to throw at him, Shido was more than prepared. Because after all, as long as he had friends like these, he couldn't lose. In the meantime, 
Kotori had a private meeting with Reina. The two of them making sure that the room they were in wasn't being tapped in. No one would be privy to this conversation. You wanted to speak to me, Miss Kotori? Yeah, Reina. I've been having some doubts. Doubts? Doubts about what? About Dr. Wells. Look, I'm not saying that I'm not grateful that he brought Cisco along to help. But still, why didn't any of us know anything about it? Not much has been known about Dr. Wells, Kotori. Well, outside of him being the founder of Star Labs, but after the incident five years ago, well, safe to say that any of those secrets were probably destroyed. Yeah, but even still... You and I both know that the Doctor has never been on the up and up. I mean, first, Star Labs was backing and supporting DEM, almost as if they were in bed together. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Star Labs gets uprooted and completely destroyed. Then suddenly the Doctor has a change of heart and decides to work with Ritasker, giving us all the information and detail we could possibly ask for. And then there's his relationship with my brother. You mean how he worked with Shido? Yeah. I get the doctor smart and everything, but still. The way he's able to help Shido. It's as if he knows more about him than any of us. And I don't even know how that's possible. Well, it's often thought that the doctor could be rather versatile. But even still, I do understand why you have the concerns that you have. What would you want your next move to be? This can't leave this room. At least for now. I'm putting the doctor under watch. Just between you and I. I don't want Shido or anyone else involved in this. The less that know, the better. If we go looking around and we find nothing at all, then we consider this completely forgotten. But if I have even an ounce of to suspect that he might be up to something. We're taking him down, no questions asked. I want everything to be on high alert. At least on the wraps for now. Until we can figure out what's going on. Understood. We'll begin our investigation. And we'll make sure to keep things on a need to know basis. But be careful. Even I am a bit weary of the doctor and his motives. If he truly is up to something, then there's no telling what he has up his sleeve. We must tread carefully. You're right. Let's meet up with the others. No point in keeping them waiting. As Kotori left and went to go walk down the hall, the doctor would come wheeling out of the next room, moving right past her. Miss Kotori. How are you doing today? Dr. Wells, I'm doing just fine. I'm glad to see that you're still here, working diligently as always. Well, you know, science waits for no one. <laughs> Duly noted. But still, take a break. I'm ordering it. Go enjoy yourself. Sure thing. Anything you say, Captain. <laughs> This is interesting. What is that, Master? I can look through the vestige of time. I can see everyone's fate. Their past, their present, and even their future. And yet I can't see anything for Shido. What do you think it means? We all know. He's the one. The one that will help me get to the past. You think he's capable? I know he's capable. He might be my only chance. And once I get back there, I will destroy her and bury all of her sins in the ashes. <laughs> well, for now, let's keep on the prowl. Keep your ears out, ladies. You never know what's coming next.
This concludes Day Alive Flash in Time. What if Shield was the Flash? Season 2, Part 5, the Season 2 Finale. And with this video, this officially concludes Anime DC Comics Chapter 1. And, as many of you have been wondering, what would the name of Chapter 1 be? Well, I am pleased to inform you all that all of the collective anime DC comic videos, including this one that are out so far, will officially go under Chapter 1, World's Finest. That will be the official name of Chapter 1, World's Finest, which now comes to a conclusion with Data Live, Flash in Time, What If Shield Was the Flash, Season 2, Part 5, the Season 2 Finale. I want to thank all of you for your support with this series, with all of the anime DC comic stories that we've done this year and last year, the culmination of chapter one. Thank you all for your support, for everyone reaching out, your various stories that we've done, everything. Um, as I always say, I can't do it without you. You make the channel grow. You make the core grow. You are always appreciated, always welcome as we continue on the road to 5K and beyond. But anyway, that brings this story to a close. That brings this chapter to a close. And I can't wait to show you all what comes next. But anyway, that's going to do it for the end of today's video. I'm Javon Harrington with Power Core Productions and Podcastings. Signing off, and I'll see you next time.